Hey guys, I'm Cecilia Jr. here, aka Mustache Chom, here to review Ruby Gilman's Teenage Kraken. If you end up enjoying this full movie review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my petition to help out small YouTubers. Second, right there to my Patreon and PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel directly. And fourth, to my Discord server, where you can join, collab, and chill, and do all that cool stuff. And Schilling will be reminded at the end of the review. With all that out of the way, let's get into Ruby Gilman's Teenage Kraken. So before getting into the plot characters and all that cool stuff proper, I will say, uh, based on my own experience on this, uh, upon viewing the trailers, uh, yes, the unfortunate uh, side effect of this movie in particular, and it's particular trailers had revealed way too much information about what was going to happen in this movie and quite frankly that's probably one of the main reasons why this didn't pull as much potential traction as it probably could have if instead you know the trailers went above and beyond and instead you know went towards this way of like insinuating that there was something more but just at the cusp of revealing that there was something more about uh you know the family or about her uh then that would be where you would want to end that type of trailer to uh create a hook uh for the audience and that is for anybody who wants to get into you know trailer uh making uh if, 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 you know, if that's your shtick, uh, you always want to give people enough information, but just give them enough of a mystery, too, um, to, uh, give them that sort of what, you know, what is this movie still going to be about, but kind of have a general basic vibe of what the movie is going to be about. So yes, if you've seen the trailers, unfortunately, you probably already knew what most of this movie was going to be, and an extension of that is that I don't think this movie has been performing all too well, which has kind of been the typical trend of a lot of recent movies of a race of, of recent anyway, but I'm still going to go over the story and plot and talk about it objectively as possible. Because I do think that there are some positive elements in the story, I just think that there could have been still done a lot better here. And the reason why I want to go over this in particular is because it is technically a new original project. And I do think that that is something worth, you know, worth at least mentioning at the, you know, start end of this review. Considering how many reboots there are, how many remakes there are, how many sequels there are, etc, etc. Again, it is always quite refreshing to get that new idea, even if, you know, a part of it is sort of, you know, even when the initial trailer was out, they were sort of insinuating that they would be kind of mock, doing a mockery of the Little Mermaid and how that whole bit goes. But even that, I will get to when we get to her introduction. But we shall start from the beginning. So we get uh, an opening narration from Ruby Gilman. That is the name of our main character, which is where our title, our first bit of the title comes from. Uh, and she seems to be a math expert and uh, she wants to already uh, at the beginning of the film blend in and simultaneously wants to go to uh, what's being promoted heavily here is the prom. Uh, she already has a crush and we get a little bit of her family. Uh, her mom sells houses, uh, her dad does like bottle work and the son does a lot of dodgeball stuff. That's like the basics of the family. So, uh, her narration doubles up as a video for the mom to go to the said prom, but the mom is saying, insisting on saying no. Um, 
So as she uh, makes her way to school, uh, they have this bit where, like, she's nearly ran over, and then the people are, like, looking at her, and then she says she's Canadian, and then that somehow is, like, everyone just, like, calms down. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't get the joke, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Uh, her friends, uh, she discovers, are, when she gets to the school, she has three of them, she has, like, this, uh, typical, uh, I guess goth like character I guess is like our end of the world type character I'm not sure what gender I would place on that word but you know sort of in that vein I suppose um, type character and uh, the guy is like getting ready to ask her out the friend guy and then we have her main best friend currently who's uh, got another uh, significant other as well. That So they're all going to prom too. And they're trying to guilt trip her into sneaking to prom essentially. Uh, and she sees her own big crush named Connor. Uh, and Initially, it does not go well, but uh, after being convinced to go big, as it were, uh, she's, like, offered this, like, cannon-like object, or, like, some sort of confetti thing. Uh, she's getting ready, and as the school uh, day is ending, she, like, confronts him again, and she's, like, and as soon as he's like, oh, you know, I kind of like the simple stuff. And despite that, and she getting ready to fumble around and almost getting ready to ask her, she he sees and notices the confetti cannon thing and grabs onto it, is wondering what it is. And uh, he accidentally activates it near the water and falls in. Uh, she panics. Uh, for a bit, trying to throw down the floaty device, but it does not go far enough. So she dives in and shortly faints. Uh, she wakes up, uh, or she lights up when she faints, I should rather say. When she awakens, we are then met with our, uh, antagonist of the movie. I'm gonna, you know, since it's no spoilers here, uh, since the movie trailers already did all of that work, the heavy lifting for that, uh, her name is Chelsea. And she's already taking credit for the save. And I'm already gonna say it, I'm actually a little bit surprised here. Um, not the whole, like, she's taking credit for it thing, but the whole, like, the whole, uh, her being a mockery of the Little Mermaid, I thought, legitimately, that they were gonna have this character sing. Nope. They just have a bunch, and I mean a bunch of pop songs instead. And I'm, like, wondering why? Why is there so many pop songs in this movie? It's so, uh, it's so off-putting and, uh, distracting. A lot of them don't seem to fit the feel uh, as much as, you know, I, I think original music would have uh, been able to, uh, you know, incorporate here. Uh, and top of, like, the whole mockery thing, I thought they were going to go for a... I thought this mo movie was honestly going to be, like, a mu musical mockery type parody thing, but no, they don't even have her saying here. Um... However, uh, when she uh, confronts uh, Ruby, that being Chelsea, uh, she seems to be genuinely concerned. And this, to me, is very off-putting by the end of the film. Because I'm going to say it now. Uh, spoiler. I guess not spoiler alert, but you know what I mean. Um, this young... Uh, teenage girl is not really a teenager at all. 
Uh, in fact, she seems to be the mother's age, and maybe even older. Uh, I don't even know how old. But point being, is that there are bits in the movie up until that switch where I'm like, were they planning to write two different characters and just got lazy and like attached the two characters together bit here? Because it definitely feels like that. Chelsea, when she's in that form, definitely feels like a completely different character from what we see when she officially turns into the villain of the movie. Like, that is how swapped the the uh, decisions are. Not even hints of, like, manipulation outside of, like, she claimed the save, and that's, like, whatever. Like, I don't know how, and you know, you could read that in a sort of sus way I suppose but then again she, when she shows concern and by the way Ruby has already left the scene at this point and you can see that it, it's through the animation she clearly looks concerned like legitimately I'm like why would you do that why would the movie do that if later on it's gonna be like she's gonna you know since Ruby is not even seeing it you know Again, what's the point? I, I don't understand that bit. Um, almost as if I'm suggesting that I think the whole bit about her having a mother, uh, you know, having Chelsea and what she turns into actually be two separate characters actually would have been better for both the writing and the deeper thematic through line of the movie. And I'm baffled by this decision, quite frankly. It really just destroys what seems like to be a kind of interesting character, quite frankly, or could have been a quite interesting character if they didn't turn her into generic, and I mean almost worse than generic, typical villain. And her dialogue when she's in that form, in the villain form, is just terrible. It's just, again, why? But anyways, getting back to our uh, going in order... We see that Ruby is now supersized, um, or she begins to transform into the supersized, and eventually she's like hiding in the forest, and the mom eventually sees her while she's doing her job, and rushes over, um, and uh, during her run over, uh, she hits her brother with her car, or I think so, uh, and, like, tags him along, and eventually we see, uh, the mom talk with her and begin to explain this whole ordeal about how only, uh, the woman Kraken can change and how, uh, this is, like, what it's all about, uh, and we learn that the brother's name is, I believe, Bill. Uh, despite all of this, the mom still wants to hide other things to protect her, that being her grandmother. Which, again, you see in the trailer, so you already know, probably know if you've seen the trailers who I'm referring to. So, yeah, he's, he's the one who spills the beans to Ruby about her. So she dives into the water willingly. Uh, and this is where we get our first pop song, is, is what I'm talking about. And it's like, okay, well, that's odd. We see the kingdom of the Krakens. And indeed, we see uh, the grandma uh, come down. And uh, talk about how the mom was the previous uh, warrior. And how she gave up that life to when she gave, you know, had probably was around near pregnancy or whatever. Uh, but says the Kraken will always answer the call. Um, so, yeah. Uh, she makes her way up. And she uh, is revealed to only Chelsea at this point. 
who also reveals that she is a mermaid at this point and reveals her mermaid form to uh, to Ruby. Not to mention that she also saves her. So again, is keeping in consistency until it becomes inconsistent when she completely flips and does the 180. But despite all of this, Ruby still calls it off. Uh, like being all faked out and stuff because all of this stuff is still overwhelming. So, you know, Chelsea's like, all right, bye, or whatever. Uh, so, we get another pop song when this happens. Uh, but not too later on, Chelsea does prompt Ruby back up. So, they both go under the water, and there's another pop song as uh, we begin to see that Chelsea is guiding her to the trid this trident, the, the MacGuffin of the story. And she alludes to how her mom, or her, uh, was in the battle with the Kraken and how she wants to change things. And again, I think that if they kept that, like have the mo this mom character that she keeps me mentioning actually being a separate real character, I actually think, again, that in terms of writing, that actually would have been the better choice, again, through the thematic through line of uh, Ruby dealing with her own mom and her own mom hiding secrets, you know, out of love. And you have uh, this, you know, in comparison, then you would have Chelsea and, you know, in this case, her mom, and her mom is telling the truth but the truth, or, you know, in quotes, in tr of truth of, like, this whole, you know, war stuff, uh, but is doing so to, uh, to still omit through lies and still, like, propagate, you know, this war stuff to continue on or, like, try to indoctrinate, indoctrinate her daughter into, uh, you know, seeing the Kraken as the evil, you know, maintaining the status quo, as it were. Um, again, I think having both of those characters in that way would have actually made the writing and the thematic through line stronger. So I'm, again, once again, baffled by the choice of having Chelsea be the simultaneously main protagonist and actually be this the the character who is at war and it just really ruins pretty much any sense of this character's momentum as a character because she completely flips and it feels like her character is completely broken within one continuity so there's no excuse there's no like you know you can't e you can't even make the comic argument you can't make the the prequel argument there's no there's no, you know, there's no, there's nothing else to point to other than to say this just, this is just bad writing, period. Like, or it's not as solid as it could be writing. So anyways, uh, so the mom sends the, 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 the lads, uh, in the family to go with the, uh, the Kraken Hunter to distract him, essentially, and have him do his own bit. Because he's been sort of, uh, eyeing the situation, as it were. Excuse me. So, after learning about the Trident, Ruby returns to the Grandma to get a... F you know, to start looking into the lessons about how to be a Kraken proper. And we get another pop song. Meanwhile, we start to see the other characters like Connor looking for her, her friends looking for her, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, Ruby starts to just leave us Chelsea because they're, the, they're doing, they're focusing on the Trident. Um, yeah. Well, again, the family, the rest of the family is helping on with the catch. Or the fake catch, anyway. 
Uh, but Ruby goes to her own mom. And Chelsea is gone. Uh, but Ruby catches up after being so angry with her mom. Um, because, you know, she still had been hiding things and all that stuff is finally venting out in a way. And Chelsea only gets to her afterwards. It's a little bit of a weird bit there, but whatever. Um, and we learn her proper name is Narissa. Narissa never had a daughter, as uh, the mom explains. And this is just as Ruby grabs the trident. And indeed, Chelsea turns into Narissa, and then her dialogue turns to... Like, instantly. Instantly just turns to shit. I'm not even talking about, like... Ooh, this is juicy bad guy dialogue. I mean, her bio, her dialogue is just bad. It's poorly written bad, is what I mean to say. Again, I'm gonna double down on that. And we get more music, more pop music. It's like, why? Why is there so many pop songs in this movie? It's so unnecessary. Uh, anyway, Nerissa, now known as, confronts both the mom and the grandma. Uh, who joined the battle. Uh, and during this little moment, we have a little moment with the brother, Bill, uh, giving the little life thing about, uh, giving the little thematic lesson to, like, Ruby about how much the mom, you know, truly cared and what she gave up and so on and so forth. So, you know, he's been used for comedic relief for, like, a, good, a great portion of the movie, so that was a little nice bit to give him as well. Uh, finally at the end there. And guess what? We got another, another, another pop song. And while they fight, Ruby lasers the trident. And her friends are, like, there supporting her. And then they, they win the day when the trident is broken. And, uh, Narissa eventually turns back into her Chelsea form. And the, the, the Kraken guy gets her instead. So her friends support her, and she gets her little dance with her boyfriend, and she gets she gives a little kiss as she gets told of a new problem at the end of the movie, and she charges forth, ready to leap into action, answering the call, as it were, to be a heroine. And that was Ruby Gilman's Teenage Kraken, and I will say, uh... It is a little bit disappointing. I can see the potential in this movie, too. Just consistently happening. Uh, particularly a lot so with more, more so Chelsea rather than anything else. Ruby is a fine character. Uh, I think, like, based on the little time she has with Chelsea, her falling for that trick is completely, I feel, is, like, in line because of how genuine it feels, considering. But again, the flip is what is actually what's really bad here, and it just feels completely out of place. There's nothing... This feels worse than Frozen, like, like surprise reveal, you know, or, you know, some of those are more surprise reveal movies of, like, the surprise villain or whatever. This feels like worse than all of them. It feels like the worst surprise reveal villain of all time so far. Of recent memory, anyway. Uh, this is just so poorly written as soon as that moment comes up. And again, you have that deeper thematic theme to have her match a lot closer to what Ruby is going through. And hell, I would, you know... Yeah, just leave it at that. Just leave it at that. I don't, again, I don't know why, like, they did it this other way. It doesn't make any sense. As for Ruby, you know, her being a little math nerd, that's all fine and good. I feel like they keep her rather consistent throughout the movie, having her freak out like a, you know, teenager and how this transformation could represent puberty or, puberty or whatever, or whatever, you know, through line you want to see through a more, like, human connection vibe. Again, only women go through with it. Kind of like, ah, uh, see, so yeah, I guess that does, that would align with that. 
a bit. So maybe like a little bit of a turning red without going too deep into it there, uh, p potentially, I don't know. Uh, if that was what they were going for there exactly, but uh, this kind of the what I immediately thought of. Uh, but other than that, I will say uh, the other characters were kind of just there. Uh, they they had little bits, or they're just like, eh, you know, they're just there uh, to sort of either go Ruby into like going to this prom or whatever. And again. I feel like since Chelsea is so almost at the cusp of being such an interesting character in line with Ruby, I feel like, again, that's what really tears about a, the majority of the movie since their confrontation uh, or what could have been a much more interesting friendship uh, could have been aligned through this movie and then it, and then it wasn't because they chose the worst thing to do. Which is to have her be the same character as Nerissa. Which again, I'm going to triple down and say that should have been two separate characters. But here we are. So with that, I'm going to give this movie a 4 out of 10. I feel like this movie uh, does the bare bones of like creating its characters. And then completely ruins one of them. Which is the antagonist of the movie. Which is a pretty big deal, considering, um, I mean, she's not in the movie terribly raw, long as Chelsea, so, that, again, having her even, you know, uh, setting up Nerissa even more and having Nerissa being her own separate character, I think, still could have worked, even in that context, regardless. And again, I think that would have saved this movie significantly. Again, and al alongside the trailers, sort of alluding to this uh, rather, you know, just outright showing the Kraken stuff and the transformations and the battle sequences allude to it in the trailers. And I think those two, that combination of two things would have saved this movie entirely. But nope, here we are with another failure. Uh, so, yep. That's what we're going with. A 4 out of 10. It's unfortunate, uh, considering it's an original thing. Uh, but it is what it is. And again, I'm here to be as objective as possible. So, that's my review of Ruby Gilman's Teenage Kraken. If you ended up enjoying this full review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description when I want to head you over to my petition to help out small YouTubers, so get a third to my Patreon and PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel directly, and fourth to my Discord server, where you can join, collab, and show, and do a lot of cool stuff, and until next time, everyone, bye bye